Here, we have this diagram of a plastic tube with a cross-sectional area of 5.00 centimeters squared. The short arm of the tube on the right here is sealed and has a length of 0 0.800 meters. We are gradually filling the tube from the long arm on the left-hand side with water. And lastly, we are told that the seal on the short arm will pop off if the force on it exceeds 9.80 newtons. Therefore, what total height of water in the long arm will make the seal pop? To make this situation more clear and easier to work with, let's define some additional variables other than the ones the problem gives us. The value we're looking for is the total height of the water in the left arm of the tube, so let's call that uh, h sub total or tote. We are already given the height d of the right arm of the tube, so let's call the missing height here between the top of the right arm and the top of the left arm vertically uh, h. We can now see that the total height that we're looking for is going to be equal to d plus h. I also want to perform a quick conversion on the cross-sectional area of the tube since it's given to us in squared centimeters, but we'll want that in squared meters since we're working with newtons for the force, which is an SI unit. So let's multiply 5.00 squared centimeters by the conversion factor of 1 meter and 100 centimeters and square that, of course, so that the, uh, the, Q, uh, the squared centimeters will cancel each other out and we end up with 0 0.000500 squared meters for the cross-sectional area of the tube. Lastly, I will be approximating the density of water as 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, we want to think about the forces acting on the seal and how that relates to the fluid pressure acting on it from the inside of the tube. Now, remember that the force due to pressure is given by F equals PA where P is the pressure, or difference in pressure, and A is the cross-sectional area on which that pressure acts. Now, it's important to remember, conceptually, that when we have an internal force due to a fluid's pressure that is acting outward on the seal like this, that can only happen when there is a difference between the outside atmospheric pressure and the absolute pressure of the fluid, due to the way that gravity is acting on the fluid because of its height. If there wasn't a pressure difference, then the forces both inside and outside the tube would equalize each other uh, in a way that I've sort of represented using these arrows here. But because our seal is going to pop off due to this force, that means there is a pressure difference worth accounting for. And this pressure difference is coming from the height difference between the top of the water at both ends of the tube and the way that the force of gravity acts on the fluid. We want to represent that pressure difference. In other words, we are looking for the gauge pressure here. And of course, to find the gauge pressure, we can use this formula we have here that was given by the textbook, where the absolute pressure due to uh, the force of gravity acting on a height difference is going to be equal to the outside pressure, or in this case, the atmospheric pressure, plus the product of the density of the fluid, the acceleration due to gravity, and the height difference of the fluids. So just the difference between the two pressures can be represented by simply that rightmost term here, or rho times g times h. So let's use that to expand our force formula here. So now our force formula is rho g h a, or it's the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times the height difference, or h, which is part of what we're looking for, times the cross-sectional area of one side of the seal, specifically the side that the water is acting on. Once again, since d is already given to us, and all we need is h if we want to find the total height, that means that the h variable here is exactly what we want to find for the missing portion of the height of the left arm. Let's algebraically set this formula equal to h by dividing both sides by everything but h. And we now have that the height difference of the water in the tubes is equal to the force due to pressure from the fluid divided by the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times the cross-sectional area of the seal, 
let's now substitute in our values. So of course it's 9.80 newtons for the force. Uh, I already defined a thousand kilograms per cubic meter for the density of the water. Uh, the acceleration due to gravity 9.80 meters per second squared and the surface area that this force is acting on is acting on one side of the seal or which is going to be the same as the cross-sectional area of the tube. So I use 0 0.000500 squared meters for the area. Plugging all this into our calculator we get 2.00 meters for the height difference Plugging all this into our calculator, we get 2.00 meters for the height difference between uh, the water levels in each arm of the tube. We're looking for the total height though, so let's just add H to D to find the total height of the water in the left arm of the tube. So the total height is going to be equal to 0 0.800 meters plus 2.00 meters, which is going to be equal to 2 0.80 meters in total, rounding to three significant figures based on the common addition rules for significant figures. And that is the total height of the water in the left arm of the tube.